Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be explaining how carbon dioxide is carried by the blood and how that links into the bore shift. So this picture has a blood vessel as indicated by these lines and within the blood vessel we have a red blood cell. So in this process the first thing that happens is carbon dioxide will be given off by respiring cells and tissues and released into the blood plasma. Now once it's in the blood plasma some of that carbon dioxide will diffuse into the red blood cell. So this line here just represents diffusion. Once inside the red blood cell, that carbon dioxide reacts with water to form um, carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. So that reaction occurs within the red blood cell. That is catalyzed by an enzyme, which is known as carbonic anhydrase and you need to know the name of that enzyme so you need to remember that so carbonic anhydrase catalyzes that reaction now the next step in this process because carbonic acid this compound h2co3 is an acid it dissociates as in it releases a h plus ion so what will form is h plus plus hco3 minus now, this molecule, HCO3- minus, is a hydrogen carbonate ion, which again you need to be aware of. And we also have a H plus ion in the cytoplasm now of the red blood cell. That's where all of this is occurring. Now, as you probably know, presence of H plus ions or protons will reduce the pH of the cytoplasm of the red blood cell. And that has an impact on what happens next. Now, the carbon dioxide is actually transported as this hydrogen carbonate ion and that will diffuse back into the blood plasma and that is the main way that carbon dioxide is transported in the bloodstream. Now to get back to this next step this also links into the ball shift and I'll explain that bit now. So within the red blood cell there will also be some hemoglobin which I'll indicate as Hb and each hemoglobin molecule can carry up to four molecules of oxygen or 4O2. So in this I'm just going to write HbO8 to show that that haemoglobin is carrying four molecules of oxygen. Now the presence of hydrogen actually has an impact on the haemoglobin. It makes the haemoglobin more readily release the oxygen, um, as in reduces the affinity haemoglobin has for oxygen. So what's going to happen now is that haemoglobin is likely to release the oxygen, so Hb haemoglobin plus 4O2 molecules. That was assuming that the hemoglobin was fully saturated to start with. So this links to the Bohr shift because the presence of carbon dioxide leads to an increase in H plus ions, which decreases the pH of the red blood cell and then causes the hemoglobin to be more readily, more readily release the oxygen. Now that oxygen will diffuse out the red blood cell and then it will diffuse into respiring cells and tissues which will be surrounding this blood vessel. So that process, that explains how carbon dioxide is carried in the bloodstream. And just to link that in to the graphs that you should be familiar with, here's one I prepared earlier. So this graph shows partial pressure of oxygen and the percentage saturation of haemoglobin with oxygen. Now the presence of increased carbon dioxide levels shifts this line slightly to the right. Shifts it from there to there. Um, and that means that at the same partial pressure of oxygen, as in the same concentration of oxygen in the surroundings, the haemoglobin will have a lower saturation of oxygen. Now this is important because it allows um, the red blood cell and the haemoglobin to release oxygen to cells and tissues when they're respiring, which are likely to be the surroundings which have the highest concentration of carbon dioxide. Now, just conversely, if CO2 levels are low, the line on this graph actually shifts to the right and the haemoglobin has a higher affinity and a higher saturation of oxygen. Uh, so thank you for watching and listening. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments or any video requests, just let me know. Thank you very much.